Energy continues to be a significant and challenging issue in South Africa, especially where the price of fuel and electricity is concerned. This month, the National Energy Regulator of South Africa approved a significant electricity tariff increase of over 12%. And at the same time, the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy announced an increase to petrol prices by between 65 and 67 cents. Hi, to Dumelang. Good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of uh, Soweto Today. Tonight, we spotlight the increase in petrol and electricity prices and the impact of these on South African citizens. Now, to kick start the conversation, joining us via Zoom is the uh, Daphne Mukwena, who is the Operations and Maintenance Manager at uh, Power Utility ESCOM. She's joining us via Zoom this evening. Definitely much appreciated for coming in. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tabo, and um, good afternoon to your viewers. And yeah, my I think since we've met, my my position has changed to be the Scrum spokesperson. Much appreciated. Uh, a lot of yeah, just uh, to correct it. Yeah, yeah. The, the developments there. But uh, maybe if you can please just give us a brief understanding of uh, uh, the latest update uh, as far as electricity price increases. I mean, how much is electricity increasing by? And, uh, you know, um, why are we seeing uh, these increases happening at the moment? So yeah, maybe let's start where when uh, ESCOM um, applied for this um, uh, retail tariff and structural adjustment uh, uh, application or did the application to NERSA yeah. um, in October 2023, that is around the 10th, and in December around the 14th, and that's 2023, uh, NERSA approved these uh, tariff increases. So basically, uh, from ESCOM site, we've got a 12.74% increase. Uh, that is for our customers, that is ESCOM customers. And then for municipalities or local authorities, um, we have a 12.72% increase from ESCOM site as well. And these um, will be from from the local authorities, that we are, will, they will be applicable from the 1st of july um this year up until uh, june 20 end of june 2025 and for escom the 12.7 two percent that i mentioned um was with effect from the first of april and it will be up until uh, the 31st march uh, 2025 Mm. I mean, uh, definitely recently we've enjoyed a load shedding free country for just under two weeks. Uh, but uh, the reality is that, uh, you know, we have become accustomed uh, to where we don't, uh, you know, uh, usually uh, have electricity 24 7. And then we hear that an increase is happening. Uh, you know, what do we say to South Africans who feel that an increase in electricity tariffs is not justified? I mean, uh, it is also not affordable uh, given the current economic uh, climate there. Why um, did ESCOM apply for this? Is it an issue of ESCOM trying to stay afloat? Look, um, Tabo, um, maybe let me start by also apologizing to you know the nation um and your 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 viewers that we are implementing load shedding however i think as you correctly said that you know in the past weeks um we haven't been load shedding or since the 26th of march to be exact um and obviously this is not like the first time and i think the last time in december we had about 18 days without load shedding as well and I think um, since then, you'd have also noted that load shedding uh, uh, intensity or and uh, free, uh, well, the frequency would be uh, um, <clears throat> related, obviously, with us having to to not load shed at at at, at some days, but as mm. well, not just that. We also um, since that December have implemented lower stages of load shedding as well, although we may have a setback um, in one or two days, you know, in this period between December and now. And so 
the fact of the matter is uh, whether we've got load shedding or we don't, we still need to, you know, produce electricity. And there are costs that obviously we need to incur to produce uh, electricity, to transmit it and to distribute it to customers. And unfortunately, um, as the cost obviously uh, rise, NERSA obviously have to also, um, we need to account for that those costs that are obviously rising, as you know that everything obviously is going up. However, at ESCOM as well, we also need to, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, recover those costs that um, we are producing and transmitting and uh, uh, lastly distributing this electricity. Um, and the fact that uh, over the past years, you know, for historically, ESCOM has been known, you know, for um, lower tariffs. I mean, uh, if you can compare us with the other countries, you know, we've been really, our tariffs have been very low. And this, obviously, now, unfortunately, we need to, you know, um, recover the cost, as we know that we don't make profit out of this, but we need to recover the cost that we are uh, producing and transmitting distribution, I mean, and distributing electricity to our customers. And uh, um, uh, we need to recover those costs so that we can also sustain our business as well. So basically, that's, that's, that's the main reason. And even though you are saying that you don't have load shedding, as I said, that load shedding has been at the intensity and the frequency has reduced. But uh, even during this time, we still need to produce, we still need to transmit, we still need to, to distribute. And that is obviously a cost that we need to incur and at the end of the day to sustain in the business as well so that we can be able to still um, uh, continue with the the business at the end of the day and still supply electricity to uh to the the rest of the nation i mean um definitely in the interest of time before i let you go i mean um i understand what you're talking yeah. about saying that we need to you need to sustain the business and stuff but you know my my concern is don't you think the method that you are using of uh, you know recouping the funds uh, that you've lost uh, as people are not paying and you know big consumers of electricity big businesses are also not adhering to your call to pay for electricity don't you think this tariff increases is i mean it's did you think it's a it's an exercise that is efficient because it seems like obviously you've been doing it for quite some time i mean we know you've requested 30 percent from nessa and they gave you over 12 percent and stuff don't you think there has to be a different mechanism so that you can be able to recoup the funds uh that you need to stay afloat as escom but not uh, pushing these um, um uh, you know tariff increases to the consumers because People cannot simply afford. Let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I think for uh, there are other, and you correct, and that is why I think in the next uh, uh, few months uh, we're going to be also looking at uh, restructuring our tariffs. And I think with the implementation of the uh, legal separation, as you know, uh, that's one of the uh, methodology that obviously would or uh, in terms of restructuring our business, uh, uh, that's one of the methods that we are implementing to ensure that you know we also make sure that our you know costs are or we are cost um, effective and we are efficient in the way we run our business and we do not obviously uh, uh, impact the customer negatively. But you need to remember that if we come to those customers that are do not afford like. You know, the customers that are on home light, that's obviously a tariff that we have that is called home light 20 amps. They are subsidized, those customers. I mean, even last year when we implemented the 18.65% increase, those customers only received 10% increase uh, in, in, um, uh, uh, in as far as the, the increase that was implemented. So those customers are subsidized. Uh, and we expect, obviously, that um, since they are subsidized as well, uh, we need also to also 
you know, and uh, educate our customers in terms of how to save electricity. And I think you would have seen that in our demand side management campaigns. That's mm. what we do so that customers also do not, you know, um, or actually uh, use electricity sparingly and efficiently to ensure that they also, other than the fact that it helps us in not um, uh, having to, to load shed them, but it also helps them to basically um, save on electricity and save some money that they would have uh, otherwise spent on electricity. Definitely, Mukwena, we unfortunately we've run out of time, but much appreciated for coming in uh, uh, this evening and talking to us. Uh, always a pleasure. You are welcome, Tabo. Thank you so much. Definitely Mukwena, they're the ESCOM's uh, operations and uh, uh, maintenance manager, but he, she's saying that, look, uh, she maintains uh, her position as the spokesperson of uh, ESCOM. They're talking to us about the latest increase, tariff increases that we know. It's just over 12% there. Uh, you know, they were, requir they were requesting just over 30%. Uh, from uh, NESA there, but unfortunately they gave them just over 12%. South Africans simply can't afford. Uh, she's saying they're going to revisit their strategy so that they can be able to come up with different mechanisms so that they can be able uh, to recoup uh, the money that uh, is being owed to them. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue the conversation on energy in South Africa. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we spoke with Daphne Mukwena, the operations and maintenance manager at ESCOM, to give us an understanding of the increase in electricity tariffs. Now joining us via Zoom is Automobile Association spokesperson Leighton Bird. Uh, he joins us to speak on the ongoing fuel price increases. Leighton, much appreciated for joining us uh, on the show. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Much appreciated. I mean, we recently had a, another fuel price increase that has seen petrol price, uh, you know, go up by 60 to 65 cents a litre. For the layman, why are we seeing these increases this time around? What could be the causes then? Look, I think the causes are very well known. And essentially what it is, is international oil prices are going up. Uh, and because those international oil prices are going up, and they're going up for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, we see there's conflicts in the world. Um, there's issues with supply uh, in terms of, um, you know, the routes that uh, vessels can follow. Um, and because of this, um, we're seeing that internet, and, and obviously there's cuts in production. Um, you know, the, uh, the Americas are entering into a summer period that may impact as well. Mm. Uh, they're coming out of winter, which has, you know, caused a lot of uh, oil usage. So there's a lot of factors that are inf influencing that international oil price, and mm. it's become higher. And when these geopolitical developments take place anywhere in the world, the impact of it is going to be felt throughout the world. And South Africa is not an exception. Uh, and this is what we see when those prices, international oil prices go up, we feel the pain locally in our pumps. And then obviously the other factor is the Rand US dollar exchange rate. Um, and it's playing a, 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 in the last couple of months, not a, a very significant role, but it's playing a role nonetheless in at least bringing that price down a little bit, um, but not enough to avoid us actually getting price increases. Mm. I mean, uh, with the way things stand, uh, what does this mean for the price of petrol in the upcoming months? I mean, uh, you know, you ask yourself a lot of questions. If uh, is, is there likelihood of another increase or a decrease as we are heading to the second half of the year? I think we're definitely looking at another increase for petrol. Absolutely. Uh, perhaps another decrease for diesel. Um, but I think we are staring down the barrel of another increase for petrol. Um, and it's going to bring us in line with some prices that we had in October last year, in July 2022, um, where we saw prices reaching up to 25, 26 rand a litre. Mm -hmm. We're currently at 25 rand a litre for 95 in Gauteng and 24 rand a litre for um, 95 down at the coast. So we're already touching on, on, on really high prices. Um, and that's going to have a huge impact um, on all consumers. I mean, if we just look at, you know, in January, we we're paying 22 Rand 50 a litre. Mm -hmm. Now we're paying 25 Rand or we will be paying 25 Rand 50 uh, going into, uh, uh, into May. 
it's already three rand a litre more expensive. So that gives you an idea of just how big these jumps ha have been. Mm. This is very concerning indeed. I mean, what impact does this have on, on the motorists? And can we safely say that fuel is becoming increasingly unaffordable for them? I mean, a lot of people are asking, since we are supplying our neighbor countries with mm. fuel, uh, you know, uh, at a lesser, uh, I mean, they are selling uh, fuel at a lesser price than uh, the 25 rents that we have. Why is it mm. so different? So first of all, I think the issue of affordability is a very interesting issue. Um, I don't think that people who own vehicles can necessarily say that fuel is unaffordable. They have no choice but to buy it. Um, you know, people rely on their vehicles to get to work. They rely on it for emergencies. They rely on it to get their children to school. Um, you know, many people rely on vehicles for, um, you know, uh, for over weekends uh, for, for their hobbies or whatever. So. It, it, it's not a question of it's unaffordable. It's what can I cut to afford my fuel? Um, you know, what can I take away out of my budget so that I can actually afford the petrol that I need to get to work and to get home? Um, it is definitely becoming more expensive and it's becoming a lot more difficult for people to make hard decisions about their fuel. Um, uh, obviously, it's not only motors that are impacted. Uh, all consumers are impacted when the fuel price goes up, especially the diesel prices because it's such a big input cost in so many different sectors. So rising fuel costs are a lot of pain for every single South African. Um, why we pay less in South Africa, or why, why our neighboring countries that actually purchase their fuel from South Africa pay less than what we pay, even though we're providing the fuel to them, is because they don't add taxes to, the, to their fuel. In South Africa's case, we have two main taxes. The one is the general fuel levy, and that's currently 3 rand 96 a litre. And the other one is the road accident fund levy. Now combined, those give you, you know, in the region of about, uh, you know, 4 rand, uh, 6 rand 20 a litre that goes directly to taxes. And those are taxes that our neighbouring countries don't pay when they buy the fuel from us. And they also don't add it to their fuel when they sell it on to the consumers in their country. Now, there's been a lot of talk um, by many, many people who say, well, let's just simply take the taxes off the fuel in South Africa yeah. and be done with it and we'll solve their problem. We can make our petrol 6 rand 50 cheaper. Well, it's not that simple, I'm afraid, because our concern as the AA is that if government were to take those taxes off that fuel, they would simply find another way to, to collect those taxes. They are massive taxes for government. The, uh, I mean, the general fuel levy is the fourth biggest tax that government collects and it's an easy tax to collect. If it does away with 100 billion rand a year that it collects through this tax, it will find another way to collect that money. It may be through higher VAT, which nobody wants, mm -hmm. higher pay as you earn taxes, which nobody wants. So it's really a bit of a catch-22 situation for us. Clayton, before I let you go, I mean, what advice can we give to motorists at present? I mean, in terms of dealing with these current fuel prices mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to stay afloat despite the current situation. I mean, what can we practically yeah. do as motorists and just as general South Africans? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. We get asked a lot. I mean, look, you know, it's going to sound really stupid to say this, but the less you use your car, the less fuel you will use. Um, if you can avoid using your car, for instance, to go from your home to the corner cafe to go get your milk and bread and rather walk or use a bicycle, that's an alternative. Can you negotiate with your employer to say, well, can I work a couple of days from home instead of coming into the office every day? That's something you can do. If that doesn't work and you say, well, can I come in earlier and leave later, um, uh, come in earlier and leave earlier or come in later and leave later, so that I can avoid traffic in the mornings and in the afternoons, which uses a lot of fuel. Can I carpool? Can I get more people who live in the same area as me and who work in the same area to use one vehicle and we can share the costs? Those are things that are pe people are doing. Is public transport available to me? Is it safe? Is it reliable? And is it going to be more affordable than using my own vehicle? Um, and then obviously, you know, is my vehicle in a good condition? Because if your car isn't running well, if your tires aren't, um, you know, in a good condition and aligned properly, your car is not going to be using the optimal amount of fuel. So these are all the types of things that you as a motorist need to be looking out for. Leighton, much appreciated for coming <laughs> in. Always a pleasure speaking to you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate the chance to be on your show.
That was uh, Leighton Beard, uh, the Automobile Association spokesperson, speaking to us about the fuel price increase and what it means for motorists. It seems like it's going to be a tough year for uh, consumers, uh, you know, be it you are a motorist or uh, you are using, uh, you know, taxis to go to work. It seems like it's definitely going to be uh, one of uh, the difficult years as we are expecting, anticipating another increase there. Let's park it there for now. So it today returns on the other side of this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on the electricity and petrol prices and the impact that this has on South African citizens. Now joining us now in studio is media officer with the General Industries Workers' Union of South Africa, Giusa Koketso Pasha to speak to us about the impact uh, that these has on uh, the uh, general South Africans uh, there. Okay, so much appreciated for coming in uh, the show this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tawo. Greetings to the audience. Look, man, I'm, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, you know, um, obviously you have raised concerns as you, uh, particularly looking at um, um, the latest increases uh, the fuel price increase, also the electricity tariff increases. Let me understand your position as uh, uh, Giusa on that. We are very concerned with uh, the electricity tariffs and the fuel price increases. Mind you, our country has a prominent problem, a, a prominent and consistent, consistent problem of low chili. So this means that people are going to have to pay more for electricity, which they are not going to utilize fully without interruptions. And then with regards to fuel, many people are not earning too much money. They're earning 5,000 rands a month, and uh, this is going to have a direct impact on uh, their transport to work. And obviously food is also going to increase. So that's where our concern lies. Did you think the problem is, uh, you know, how ESCOM is being run? Because obviously the increases are exacerbated by the fact that ESCOM is in a dire financial problem and obviously somehow, somehow they need to come up with a plan to um, you know so that they can be able to sustain it financially and then that's the only way uh, according to them saying that look uh, I mean since we don't have uh, the necessary funds obviously when we increase the, um, the, the, the electricity tariffs then we're able to recuperate some of the money that is being owed by consumers that do you think it's justifiable for them to say that? No, I do not share their sentiment. I mean, this is going to have a dire impact on the people on the ground. They are going to have to pay more, as I said. And then it's not everyone who's uh, connecting or getting power illegally. And this is one of the reasons. And I'm not saying that people should go and con connect the power Ill uh, illegally. But then this is going to be one of the factors that is going to push people to connect to the grid illegally. Because mm -hmm. electricity is going to be very expensive and many are not going to afford, especially people in the rural areas, people in informal settlements and some in the townships. Mm. And it's not only them, there are also big businesses which are getting electricity illegally. Mm. On the issue of fuel prices, I mean, we, we, this is uh, the second uh, consecutive fuel price increase in the past two months, if I may put it that way. Um, how do you think uh, motorists are going to survive? I mean, obviously, uh, Santaco is also contemplating the issue of increases uh, because of the recent uh, increase in fuel price. Do you think that uh, also it will uh, affect uh, the citizens, uh, uh, particularly if Santaco uh, do increase those fares? It is obviously going to have a impact on the citizen. I mean, not everyone is going to get an increase at work and then the taxi fare is going to increase as a result of the fuel. So maybe say you are earning five rand a month, and now electricity has increased, so is uh, uh, fuel. Everything else is going to increase. The transport, the food, and uh, maybe other things like your school fees and all of those expenses. Mm. Um, what is it that you're going to do as a union? Um, I mean, obviously you can voice your concerns, but is there action that uh, you will take as a union? Are you going to engage the relevant authorities in this regard so that they can be able to uh, come up with some sort of a reprieve to citizens? We, we can uh, protest as much as we, we like, but then if there's no political will, I do not see any 
uh, changes anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a, a need for our politicians to really consider the, 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 the livelihoods and the reality of the people generally across the country before taking such big decisions on their behalf. Mm. Just lastly, what do you think, uh, you know, um, has gone wrong for us as a country to find ourselves in this position? I mean, obviously, um, it's been 30 years since uh, democracy. We should have made strides uh, at this point, but it seems like s certain policies, uh, you know, they need to be revisited uh, so that we can be able to uh, address some of these challenges. But what do you think has gone wrong over the past few years? The rampant corruption is the number one factor. It's the main contributor to this crisis which we find ourselves in today. Hence, ESCOM is saying now that the people on the ground have to pay more for the electricity, which they have the responsibility to supply. Mm. so Pacha, much appreciated. I wish we had more time, but uh, thanks for coming in this evening. Welcome. It is a pleasure. Thank you. Much appreciated. That was uh, Koketo Pasha, the media officer of the General Industry Workers Union of South Africa, speaking to us about the impact of electricity and fuel price increases on the working class South Africans. Thank you to my earlier guest there, Daphne Mukwena, the operations and maintenance manager with uh, the embattled power utility ESCOM, as well as uh, Leighton Beard, uh, the spokesperson for the Automobile Association for having joined us this evening and giving us their input as well. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at sowetotoday at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bye to Nagatabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team. It's good night from us, and thank you for watching. Stay for the latest updates with Mas Chabakobola coming up next. Thank you.